August Burns Red was formed in high school by JB, Matt, and I. We realized that we liked the same kind of music, and so we started jamming together. When we started the band, we didn't really have anywhere to practice, and so we started playing in the basement of my parents' house, and we just got too loud down there. We always practiced, so my dad said, why don't you move out to the barn? <laughs> I've always loved it because we could, I mean, we could play whenever we wanted. We're a metal band. We've always been really into like weird off-time rhythms and breakdowns. Went through a couple singers, and then Jake joined up. I drove from South Carolina to Pennsylvania. I tried it out, and then I went on tour with them for six months. It was a lot of hard work. God was on my side, and I didn't give up. Bass player quit, and Dustin joined up. Joined the band in August of 2006, and here I am today, 22, still living life. We've really been blessed with amazing chemistry in this band. I mean, go figure, we're in Mannheim, Pennsylvania, and we all meet up with each other, and A, we can all play our instruments, and B, we get along with each other. And it manifests itself in ways like being able to ride in the van for seven weeks and not kill each other. Hey there. I'm done with my shift. We do 200 mile shifts, about three hours. Uh, and now we're gonna eat some lunch. We got her picking the crop here. Arby's, Wendy's, Burger King, McDonald's, pretty much any food that can clog your arteries or kill you, it's within about 100 steps of here. So this is what we like. <laughs> Apple a day. Keeps the doctor away. You see that? <laughs> When you're in a van, you actually get to see and do stuff. When you're in a bus, you roll up. At noon, you're stuck at the venue until you leave that night. There's so many pros to taking a van for as long as you possibly can that uh, that's what we did. Checking today, we're gonna run a couple songs that we haven't played on this tour. Oh, how many songs are we taking out? Taking out two, adding two. Some specials for the kids that are diehards. I was really hoping to make this guy work today because it sounds awesome, but apparently it doesn't turn on anymore. Sports are very, very important to me. Since I was a young child, I was raised to root for the home team, which is Philly. So, baseball's my favorite, Phillies. I have the Phillies on my in-ears, and Dustin has the Eagles. Wait, I got something else, too. The Liberty Bell. The Liberty Bell. I just, I love how much energy they have. A super brutal heavy metal party. They're my favorite band. The drummer's my favorite drummer ever. They've influenced me a lot. I've now played drums. Just the stage presence, the music. They're awesome dudes. The message the lyricist always portrays. I love anal analyzing uh, lyrics to songs, and especially theirs, because they just, they take so much meaning in my life, and I can relate to them a lot. Uh, probably the biggest lyrics that, that really stick, hit home for me, um, comes off of their second album, Messengers. Um, when he says, wave goodbye to the past, you've got your whole life to lead. Like when I first heard, grab the wheel, make this life yours, kind of like stuck with me a little bit through personal issues I was going through. While their passion for number one, you can definitely tell that they give their all when they write their music, they sing, even to their fans, they're, 
passionate about everything they do. They never take for granted a single day that they've been given, and I respect that, because without any of the fans, they wouldn't be where they are. I got this at a gas station, I don't know, two, two and a half weeks ago, for like eight bucks, and gotta, it's a 6X. You gotta wear it to bed with nothing else. I know, like, I, feel like, I feel like when I get gangster home, man, yeah, I'm gonna wear my gangster Nike to bed. I love it. This is my life now. This is, my this life. is how we roll. Holmes. We're in a parking lot in Atlanta, Georgia, next to the Masquerade, and we're about to ride scooters for fun. I recommended this idea thinking it would be shot down immediately. For some reason, it flew. It's not really that bad at all. Earlier today, no, earlier today, we were throwing knives in the green room. Which I recommend doing. I mean, don't recommend doing. And I asked him, let me guess, it was a knife, and he goes, no, earlier today, I was playing with the knife. That's what he just said, though. So? But I wasn't was playing with it while he cut himself. I was working. Yeah, but you were using a knife. But he wasn't playing with it. No but play. I said, the let me injury guess. Of, oh, my oh, God. Let me guess, it was worth 50 oh bucks. 50 Guys, bucks. That's what helmets are for. They're Dude, what the f***? Man, you <laughs> son of a b <laughs> You stupid mother... <laughs> Seriously, I'm sick and tired of this bullshit. Oh my god, family. Jane, shut the f up. It's your problem. I'm sick and tired of your mouth. You I'm stupid son of a. Look at this. I'm wearing Jade sunglasses, so I have any of my own. I'm gonna ride a little moped or a scooter that matches my shirt. I'm gonna be looking real awesome. Scooters, Atlanta, downtown, 35 miles per hour, tops. time in my life I rode a two-wheeled item with a motor. That was the most fun I had on the tour. It's cool just to be able to go see a city for what it is instead of the one street you play on. turn and as I put on my turn signal uh, and also I might add there was a bunch of girls walking down the street already making fun of us and then my bike shuts off <laughs> so that was even better and we're spewing and it's spewing gas everywhere so now I'm gonna have to ride on the back of Dustin's bike and it's going to be awesome it's can't wait awesome. to hear what people say probably go shirtless of, and pantless <laughs> yeah, a lot of stereotypes are gonna be made in the next 10 minutes Let's have a good time. Let's not throw up or think. What? Hey, good luck, guys. Thanks. Good luck to you. All right, guys, guys. I'm sorry in advance if I screw up. What? I'm, Same here. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Don't screw up. <laughs>
going for lunch in Atlanta? How you started? These cookies from the hotel are amazing. They're very soft and chewy. Yeah. Oh, that's you see that one? Oh, yeah. 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 That's good. I like the guys. Ah, go and eat. Dustin, 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 Atlanta's got a sewing problem, apparently. Shh. Go and eat. <laughs> We'd heard about this place called Eats in Atlanta. I guess really good barbecue and just southern style family, family style food. So I'm excited. Are you excited? You should be. It's jerk, lemon pepper, and we have barbecue chicken. And all this. See, you pick with two sides or three sides. That's the side is vegetables, it's fresh vegetables cooked daily. And the other side is the pasta. And all come with garlic bread. And all come with garlic bread, all right. Yeah! Sounds good. Sounds delicious. Let's and, get some food. Uh, it's awesome to be able to sit down, just eat a meal, and take your time, and enjoy each other's company, of course. Mom was good, I had jerk chicken. And uh, spicy food makes me hiccup and sweat, which already happened. Look at my plate. You didn't eat anything. I listen to them. It's not like I'm listening to like a band. Like it's like they just like inspire me because uh, they played in little venues years ago. I used to see them as like a, like when I was young, and now I'm going all over states to see them like it just makes it seem like you can make it anywhere you know yeah, it just says strength it's an ambigram says strength and then courage that way so i saw august burns red back in albany with under oath and that was the day that my grandma had passed away a year previous to that and up against the ropes was the most influential song at that time for me helped me just have inner peace and feel better about the situation as best as I could and at the end of the their set I went up to Jake to tell him about it and started crying and he pretty much wouldn't let me leave until I was okay and just comforted me and letted me know that it was going to be all right and that God was by my side and that everybody was by my side so it made me feel like he actually cared about my feelings as a fan and it meant a lot to me and it changed me as a person because it made me feel like you know, anything's possible and everything's gonna be all right. I made your sunshine face. Yeah. 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 I, I also do this with my brother. Look what we got here. Look at all this. Right here. This kid's eight, and this one's eleven. Possibly the youngest, <laughs> the youngest of fans ever. That's something that's really precious to me, is the fans. It's a very passionate thing when, when, when I'm on stage and we're screaming together, you know, and see, like, what you give these kids, you know, through the music. And it's just like, if there's any place where they could ever feel safe, it's right here with, with us. Jake makes a point to go out to the merch table after every show, sit and talk to the kids and just sign stuff. And it's cool because, okay, so kids see him on stage, and he's this kind of iconic figure. But as soon as he gets off stage and he's seen eye to eye with them, I think kids really start to understand that they can do A, what he's doing, and B, they can really relate to him and, and to what he says. To give a kid that kind of feeling and, and, and for them to pour on their like energy and their love and passion for the same thing that we're doing, it's, it's like, it's like, some, like nothing I've ever felt. He gets repeated kids like come up saying, you remember me, Jake, and, and Jake remembers them. That's the way Christianity is and should be out there, you know? It's not just something you say, it's something you live. And Jake really does a good job of making that obvious with kids. I don't mind going out of my way to, to you know, spend an extra five or ten minutes with, with a kid, you know? I mean, this is a human being. This is a person that has dreams as well. And I want to instill that same drive that I've got my faith as well, you know, discuss that to them and Jesus is important to me and, and I hold him high and I, I honestly believe that I wouldn't be here doing this if I didn't have him with me. The relationship with the kids is, is very, very important. In eighth grade, I was diagnosed with clinical depression. 
and just things in my life were falling apart. My brother had an you know, a drug problem, he was in and out of jail. My parents are, were alcoholics. Just, I couldn't, you know, there was days I couldn't get out of bed. I just thought about ending it all. And then my stepbrother introduced me to August Burns Red. Went to one of their shows and from there they just inspired me to become a better person, to overcome any obstacle thrown, thrown at me and just be a better person all around. I need water. I need some water. He thinks he has allergies, but I think he's just kind of worked up. No, I sneeze a lot. That's And I've got a, a itchy throat, runny nose. That's, that's all stress-induced. That's all stress -induced. allergies. Stress-induced. That's allergies. It's allergies. Yeah, stress-induced. Allergies? Yeah. OK, yeah. That's what's going on. <laughs> Show clothes. It's gross. So it's, uh, the bane of every loader's existence. Yeah. We open up our trailer and four men from the venue, the first thing they touch is our sweaty show clothes. We try and hide it, but they always find it. Oh. Dude, we're at Amos's. Amos's South End. In, uh, in Charlotte, North Carolina. We have a bunch of good friends coming. My mom is coming, so I'm a busy bee. I'll see you guys. Hey, I'll be back. Bart 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 uh, this is my mom. Mom, Hi. this is everybody. I'm his mama. Um, I couldn't be more proud of him. He's uh, working hard, doing what he loves, and uh, he's very committed to this work. And he works hard to stay humble, and I'm really proud of that. He was really good with the potty training thing. It was, it was all good. Oh, sure. All right, we're done here. Thanks. <laughs> that's my mom. We're done. And that's my boy. Zoom in, Ma'a. Zoom in. Now zoom out. Now in. Ma'a. Ma'a. That's beautiful. <laughs> oh, mountains, mountains, beautiful lake, mountains, beautiful lake. Smoke stack. <laughs> Exploring the salt lake for treasures. <laughs> ah. uh, it's Starbucks. I bet this is part of the Aztec. Uh, Indians. Found this. Not really sure what it's here for. Oh, it's a light socket. Uh, now, now I have to explore this. Oh, it is. It's electrical cord. Oh, that's what I found. Plug it into the Salt Lake. No, it doesn't work. So we show up in Salt Lake and we're actually playing in the salt flats, like on the great Salt Lake, which we've never done before. And I went for a run. Like whenever I'm in nature, I really kind of realize how amazing God is and how big he is in my life. And it's just very evident. You know, you get away from all the noise of the city and into the country, or in this case, a huge lake, <laughs> and just, just really felt God's love in my life. The, the Great Salt Lake, uh, throwing the baseball out on the dry part of it. It's sandy. It's very warm, it really is. I'm not proud. But you knew I was. Jay, he jumps every time he catches the ball. Oh, I'll throw the ball coming in. Today Go. we're throwing with the left hand. Trying to see what happens. Not bad. I, I love to ride, I really do. It was cool driving it out in the Salt Lake because you'd sink into it, and as you may have seen, I'm not very good at doing donuts in it. Like, said, like that helps break up the tour and like go out and do something fun. Like whereas on another tour, I didn't get to ride a dirt bike, you know. So doing things like that is is awesome. I think Silverstein thinks it's funny to play jokes on us and put uh, tumbleweed. 
or whatever this is on our hood. So we're gonna put it somewhere on, on their bus. Oh. This is for you, Silverstein. I listen to the lyrics and uh, sometimes I really do really do dissect and think about it and like kind of put it towards my life. It's just uh, the positive message and all and you know it's just brings me and my friends together you know it's good to have some nice positive music every now and then but still heavy. We're in Salt Lake City, Utah and we're about to get on stage in about five minutes and this crowd is massive. I've never known Salt Lake City, Utah to bring so many kids out. It's unbelievable. Go check this out before I get up there. Look. Dude, tonight's gonna be a good night. Salt Lake, we love you guys. I right, gotta go warm up. <laughs> Vegas, playing outside today. Uh, it's nice and warm. Excited to be here. Fun. Hey, we're in Old Vegas. Where uh, is this considered Old Vegas? This is Old Vegas, right? Yeah, this is Old I'm pretty Vegas. Sure. Where things used, things used to be awesome here. Now they're uh, a little quieter, but still fun for us. This is my first time being 21 and well, I'm 22 now. In Vegas, though, I haven't been able to walk inside casinos or anything. They, they ID it before you go in, and I couldn't go in. It's my first time. And see the sign here, next walk in 13? I seriously, me and Josh are walking up to it, and we almost continue to walk because that's very confusing. Usually it says you have six seconds left to walk. That's very confusing. It's not cool to be ugly. <laughs> Am I ugly right now, honestly? You could be better. Ah. Yeah, all right. Hey, what's going on? This is Jake Lourdes from August Wins Red, and I'm here to tell you not to purchase your kid a tortoise from a pet store. A, it costs $99. B, they live to be 50 plus years. C, they don't do anything but sit. And D, they could give you a disease. Check it out. Bad pet. <laughs> hey. I was actually hoping to just stand by the ESPN ticker all day so I could get the latest updates on the news, but I had to do other things, so I'm finally getting to go stand here. And I got about five hours before doors, so that should be plenty of time for me to get all the latest news. We are at City Field in Flushing, New York. We're going to see the Mets and the Nets. I'll be rooting hard for the Nets. We're gonna get some hot dogs. Gonna get some Cracker Jack. Maybe, uh, maybe even some peanuts. I think that what we do off stage kind of dictates what happens on stage. Uh, if we're not having a good day and we're fighting in the van and we're not really like on the same wavelength, I think it totally affects how we play and how kids see us on stage. And uh, this kind of environment definitely... Home run, baby. It's gonna be a good show tomorrow. <laughs> Times Square, New York City, about to play uh, show number one at the Nokia Theater. First, we're going for a walk. I like coming to places like this because they actually have cool stuff. Like, I really, really want this pedal. Uh, a lot of a lot of big stores you can't find stuff like this, like mom and pop shops that have cooler stuff. But it's hard to find an awesome mom and pop shop, and this is an awesome one. And 
Times Square, New York. Uh, we're gonna ride the Ferris wheel. I am. I wanna get on the Scooby Doo one. This guy comes to life at night, I know it. Look at him, just look at him. I know you come to life. Do it. Oh, it's Kyle Petty. He's still alive anyways. <laughs> Uh, well, New York City is kind of big, and there's like a lot of people, and you're you're constantly like, because I guess I don't know, maybe I walk slow or something, but they're always like, oh, gotta do something, bumping into me and stuff. And then there's those yellow taxis. Man, have you ever tried to get taxi? You're like, hey! So you just gotta get the taxis. And honestly, I'm a little confused as to what part of New York I'm in. But there's a lot of lights, a lot of people, a lot of things going on, and um, I'm just glad to be on tour with August Burns Red, man. Those guys are just amazing. Have you? Oh, there's Matt Grinder. You ever seen him drum? Man, he's the best drummer, dude. Seriously. What do you do? That you do? That you do? Now think about that for five minutes, at least five minutes, and then when you get your answer, go get your jelly and tweet about it. Jake's got all kinds of characters. My favorite is Todd. I love Todd so much. I, I think Jake's hysterical. I know everybody's really excited about tonight's show. Hey, we all have a good time. Here. Hold on. I want to hear what Todd's got to say. His voice and his character lends itself to, to all sorts of different like personality traits. Todd being our obvious favorite. Todd's in the van a lot. I'm not going to lie. He hangs out a lot. That's why you saw the Todd, what did you just see? I saw an eagle, guys. A bald eagle? Yeah, well, Matt was a bald eagle. You shed a tear for the country. Matt said it was an eagle, and I was just, I'm pretty sure it was. That's what we saw. Man, when you're at your wit's end on tour, that kind of stuff really, I guess, lightens the mood. Like I said, guys, I know we all had a good time. I know the show was good. The kids were loving it. We all enjoyed ourselves. Right, amen? Right? Amen! amen. amen. Lancaster County, Pennsylvania, more specifically Mannheim, which is the town we all grew up in and we thought it'd be fun to shoot our DVD here. It's very close to Lancaster and it's very known for, I guess, being a very rural environment, a lot of Amish people around. We're out in the middle of absolute nowhere, pretty much on top of a hill. Now we're playing in a basketball court inside a church's activity center. This is a special event for us and we wanted to do it where we started. Mannheim is our home and you know, it, it's kind of a roots thing, I guess. It's, it's fun to bring everyone out here into our little town of Mannheim and let them see where we grew up, I guess. So uh, we're playing in Little Mannheim, Pennsylvania, at a little church called Mannheim BSC, which stands for Brethren in Christ. And I actually attended this church years ago when I was a kid. So they have this big gym that they built as an add one. Um, we decided to play in it, kind of give back to Mannheim and, and play close to home. It all comes down to, to tonight's show. We drove the 28 hours and almost 1,600 miles to really, just, just to see August Burns Red. They're the best performers I've ever seen. Their breakdowns, their melodies, their lyrics, their his voice is just all, just gets to me so much more than any other band has. Today is my 23rd birthday, so this is also why this band means so much to me, is that today, this is like my birthday present to myself. Just keep doing what you're doing, your fans love you, and will support you no matter what. Great job. They have a positive message of um, hope and looking for things in this life that um, fulfill you. It's August Burns Red, it's my favorite band. No one brings mu as much energy, no one has as much fun. August Burns Red has changed my life. Big day today, big things are happening. A lot of kids, a lot of stress, a lot of weight. 
It's all right though. Go out there, you can kill it. I'm excited. I'm sick of waiting. I just want to get it over with. Well, I'm not getting over. I just want to get started. I'm sick of thinking about it, sitting around. Here, bring here. Bring here. Yeah. Ready to go. I don't think people realize how much happens off stage that you bring on the stage with you. We realize how important it is for a band to get along with each other, for a band to have any sort of longevity. August Brins Red over the years has just become a family. But I think you'll see all sorts of dynamics with each of us and how we interact with each other. Seeing into tour life. We're pretty much brothers at this point. I, I hope people realize that we're just people. We were all kids with dreams, you know? We've always tried to put on the most energetic show that we possibly can. Every night, and bring out our shirts with sweat, stink, whatever. If you're watching it and you're entertained, then we did our job. Begins. <laughs> Sorry, it's a new beginning, brother. Yeah, how you feeling, man? All right. Came in a little strong. <laughs> Starting from the top and working its way down, yeah, huh? The top's kind of rough because the. So you've got you've got a couple tattoos now. Would you? Which one would you say is the most painful? The most painful? Yeah. Right here, man. The that chest piece. Turns rough. <laughs> yeah. Did Jake tell you how he's he's copying me? Look at this. With, with the waves? Yeah, Just look, check at, that look out. at his. Look at the end of his. So you got that right there. And look at this. And then signature dumb. The Todd Bane waves. <laughs> Todd Bane signature waves. Yes. Yeah. So you know those are patent painters. <laughs> it's intense, dude. What it do? What it do?